Hostiles, 12 o'clock and 6 miles. What is this tack they're looking for anyway? It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond. Isn't the Lambda site off-world, sir? I'd like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no sensors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. This particular structure that I found about a year ago is key to explaining the final piece of the puzzle, talking about how could there be a civilization under the ice in Antarctica. The first two parts of the puzzle, I think a lot of my uh, prepper friends will understand. If there were some type of a cataclysm, some type of an event that would reduce everyone down to survival, the first thing you're going to need is a way to secure a supply of fresh water. Now, there's lots of ways of doing that. In Antarctica, 75% of the world's fresh water exists. I don't think that would have been an enormous challenge for the people if they survived the cataclysm. The next thing that you would need, honestly, some people would say food, personally, shelter. You would need to create some type of a base, some place you knew you were safe. Now, our own scientists have confirmed that there are miles and miles and miles of tunnels down there that have temperatures in the high 60s, low 70s. So you would have a place where you wouldn't freeze and you wouldn't dehydrate immediately. These are facts. These are things we know. The next thing would be food. And that's where this comes in. You see, I talked about this particular tunnel in the context of what could have been the desire of the Germans in World War II, what was their um, interest in Antarctica? That they may have found some place down there where under the ice it was habitable, where they could have created a base. Well, this tunnel wouldn't have been just used for submarines. Fish and sea life could be going in and out in large uncharted rivers underneath the ice sheet. And there is actually an article out last couple days that you can read that talks about what they describe as upside down rivers where the warm water is getting right up to the shelf of Antarctica 
and melting away the ice, but that warm water would be what would have delivered the, all the nutrients. So you would have water, you would have shelter, you would have food. So if you had the ability to basically get on with life through structures like this, if you survived the cataclysm, you could have restarted society in a whole new way. And given that the continent is so remote and cut off from the rest of the world just by the oceans around it, there wouldn't have been. You could have existed down here for hundreds of years, generations and generations living down here. And I think what we're seeing on the surface, because of the recent amount of epic melting, is just the eventual evidence of the spread of that society. So I wanted to start there just to show some other things that I found that really can't be explained any other way. Now, I found something a long time ago, and I didn't know what it was, but I think I do now. One of the things we would have worried about, or I should say we would worry about in the future, if that were to happen in North America, is our own nuclear power stations and our own military facilities. With the nuclear power stations not having long-term access to electricity, it would create a radiological nightmare. We would also have large amounts, caches of weapons, that if they were to fall into the wrong hands could cause more of a problem than anything else. I found this giant metal dome right here that has busted through the ice. And I wonder if this was some type of an automated weapon system. Because as you can see around it, it's clearly come up, somehow been deployed to the surface. Now, there has been talk for a long time that the people that originally inhabited Antarctica were very advanced. And I hate to say it, but most of the great advances that we have made in society have come as the result of war. Many people don't know that the reason we have canned food is because of Napoleon. He put out a, uh, um, I guess, a job that he wanted someone to figure out a way to transport food over longer distances because his armies were limited by the amount of food they could take with them. And that's where the origination of canned food came from. Now, whether this platform is active, whether it's not, we don't know. But once again, we do know that someone took the time to image this area in high resolution very closely to look at something. And once again, I would like to pose the question, why would, if it was just wind, ice, rock, and snow, why would there be this effort to spend all of the time? Because it does take an immense amount of time and effort to pass these satellites, multiple satellites, over these regions, low orbit, slowly, to find this stuff. Now, another place I wanted to show is where we were yesterday. And I know a lot of people are not real all that excited about dragons and stuff like that. Perhaps the boredom that I spoke of that may not be just Chinese whalers, maybe it's these people. Because once you got along with society, what would you do? I mean, other than, you know, creating new generations of society, you really, if your complete society had fallen apart, Creating artwork might be a great way to pass the time. And we know the stories of Antarctica. We know the stories of what have come out of uh, Patagonia, that area of South America so close. The stories of dragons and great birds. And, you know, maybe they just took things from their stories and their myths. And this looks very much. You've got the head here. You've got the front left arm here. The front right arm is back here. And you can see the two rear legs, the body, and the tail. Now, let me be very clear for those of you that um, like to troll. Am I saying that this is a live, actual dragon on the ice? No way of knowing. Could it be? Possibly. Is it more than likely just an image of one? Yeah. I think that really is the case. 
And I know that seems like that would be kind of a boring, uneventful conclusion, but what else would you do? You have to remember, these people come from... My allegation is that the great cataclysm down there happened sometime in the 1600s. Primarily because of the situation with the Sandwich Islands, those eight, that ring of eight islands that didn't appear on any maps until 17-something or other, that separated South America from North America, or from Antarctica, pardon me. There's another thing I wanted to show that people say, well, why don't you show images of beings, of human beings? This is one where you can show it in two successive years that aren't back to, I mean, not successive years, but two successive images. Now, clearly we see here a very strange shadow that looks like you got the head, you've got the right arm, it's facing to our right, the body, whatever it's wearing, the, the legs, you can see this. Now, here's, that's 2 12, 2012. I'm party, pardon me. That's 12 16 2006. Now here's the image from 3 15 2004, two years earlier. Now, was the same guy standing in the same place? No, I think it's a statue. I think it's just caught from a different image, different angle here, so the shadow looks differently. And it's just a very large statue, but in this particular image, you can kind of see what looks like perhaps an area, a lit area underneath. Right here, this is the um, projection of the light out right here. And you could go in underneath this large statue. There was a thing known as the Colossus of Rhodes. And you guys can look that up. That in antiquity, ancient societies built giant statues like this that you could see from miles and miles away. And this is huge. Now, this is, of course, a shadow, so it might not be actually as large as what you're looking at. But there's there's so many other places, too, that show just things that are completely anomalous that you couldn't explain any other way. Like, for example, here. Look at this literally perfect Half Moon Fortification. I, I don't know how anybody could possibly explain such a thing with wind, ice, rock, and snow. This had to, had to have been created somehow. This crescent shape. And we'll, just to measure this real quick, let me grab the ruler. And see what we can get. I guess from top to bottom in, we'll do it in meters. Ooh, one second. In meters. About 18, 19 meters across. Just to give you an idea. For the American crowd, 62 feet. I don't know how anyone can look at this, especially given the location where you can see that there is, up here, some type of a small cave, something out in front of it. This kind of stuff is everywhere, and I'm up to, I think, 200 videos worth, and even if you discounted 90%, that would still leave dozens and dozens and dozens of unexplained things. And we are at high altitude about 700 feet looking at this. So I will, uh, I guess I'll just leave it there. You know, given that uh, you don't want to do too many things because it starts too many discussions. And... In the last video that I did, someone asked me about Venezuela. I did a couple of paragraphs on it. I'll pin that comment in not this video, but the last video, the video from yesterday. So you guys can read it, and hopefully it'll explain what's really going on. So anyway, like, share, subscribe. Thank you guys so much for the support. I appreciate it. We'll see you next time. would like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone 
who has continued to join us over at the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no censors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. Would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. Hot time. 12 o'clock is six miles. What is this tack they're looking for anyway? It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond, Chris King. Isn't the landesite off world, sir? Bye. Uh-huh.